Hello, I am Vijay Mahajan and uh, I work in the field of promoting livelihoods for low income households. Main I think that's but natural. But such a large number of people living below humanly acceptable standards uh, is not acceptable, particularly when we have the resources, we have the knowledge, we have the institutions today to easily address those issues. So, so I've translated that in terms of uh, poverty elevation, but to do something positive to promote livelihoods, and that's what I care about deeply. It's a very tough space to work in. What are the challenges you faced? Well, uh, you know, initially my belief was that since India has a large, uh, you know, banking system which is socially oriented, it was nationalized in 1969, and then it was given a. branches. So I'd assumed that the capital for individual household development would come from banks and that we, the development uh, people would, uh, what we have to do is organize the poor, help them with identifying appropriate activities, uh, maybe run some test pilots and then, <coughs> you know, get their, get them to uh, get the bank loans, start the activity, handhold and link them with markets and then move on to the next one. And we did this quite successfully uh, using grants, mainly donor grants while I was in Pradhan. We were not greatly successful at that stage in raising bank loans. So I then felt that if the idea has to be scaled up, you know, we need to use mainstream credit. And uh, since we found it impossible to raise loans from banks, I decided in 1993 to set up a bank for the poor, which eventually became basics in 1996. So since then, of course, uh, you know, we've started in a sense, we seeded a whole industry, which is known as the microfinance industry, uh, due to which today something like uh, one lakh crore of rupees flow to the poor, uh, which wouldn't have happened but for these uh, 20 years of effort. And Basics is just a tiny player, so we've helped trigger a whole industry. Uh, but uh, the fact is that while one lakh crores is very satisfying, it's not even half a percent of the total bank credit. So we still have a long way to go. And uh, now there are other challenges. For example, markets are not easy. Markets on the input side as well as output linkages are not easy. They're full of vested interests, monopolies, or at least oligopolies. Uh, there are issues of regulation which are not exactly pro-poor. set which is rarely available with one individual or even often with one organization. So over the years we've learned to collaborate across uh, sectoral boundaries with various types of organizations to be more effective. You know? uh, I mean, Within the basics group itself we have uh, 12 different entities but that's not enough so we have to go across to other organizations. You spoke about collaboration, could you elaborate that as an insight? while you are going to implementing your microfinance programs? I take something as simple as say, uh, you know, growing uh, soybean, uh, helping f uh, small and marginal farmers grow soybean and make a living out of it. So, at a low price, so you've got to have output buyers who will, you know, give a good price. So you're talking of several linkages, none of which are within your own ambit, you know, and so in any value chain that you work, you typically have to deal with one input supplier, one credit provider, sometimes an insurance company, definitely one or two output buyers, you know, and often a regulatory agency. 
So one needs to learn to collaborate. You know? And remember, none of this is our own farms. We are not producing anything. We are just helping farmers to do this. So. So okay, now coming back to Gap, how has your experience been? Well, given that it's a it's a first time ever event, I thought it was it was very well done. And uh, the as I said on the first day, Sthan Kal Patra was was very special. Uh, so. Uh, but you know, uh, I already said this to Sunil that the proof of the pudding is in the follow-up. You know, uh, in a sense, gap has just begun from tomorrow. You know, uh, it's what follow-up actions people take. Uh, you know, after the event, there's always a sense of aha and a lot of charge and you know, feeling a sense of camaraderie and part of a larger movement. But when people go back, you know, they are again lonely, they again need inputs, they again need guidance. So I think a strong uh, support network needs to be built and that, that is what will distinguish GAP from several similar uh, efforts. Uh, the, what do you think of the spirit, like they keep talking about collaboration, you know, working with, uh, together, working together. What do you think of that theme? Do you think it's a theme that would work for, say, an Indian scenario? I think so, and uh, we need to learn more to collaborate in India. Uh, you know, we've sort of grown up in a shortage economy, so our tendency is to sort of grab whatever we have and not share it with the others. I mean, I'm talking about the last 50 years. Before that, we had a sharing culture because we were a land of plenty. So I think as we, we are again becoming a land of plenty in some ways, you know, the sharing culture needs to come back and collaboration should come back. So. Uh, what do you think of, so the, the theme is global action on poverty. What is it that one thing that is going to unlock uh, the potential of actually rejecting and weeding out absolute poverty? Quite honestly, we should stop looking for one magic bullet. We should look for a thousand flowers bloom and you know, as a large number of fireflies as uh, Arun Mehra said, uh, you know, that is, I think, uh, what is more important. Uh, I'm quite suspicious of single magic bullet type of solutions because they can be very uh, totalitarian and, you know, in the long run can damage the interests of the really poor, so. Uh, Professor Yunus in his talk talked about Bangladesh case study, you know, in terms of how they are trying to beat poverty. They have brought it down to 50 by 2030. They are looking at eradicating absolute poverty. What are your... Um, hopes for India? I think we would be broadly in the same range as Bangladesh uh, because you know our party our poverty is largely moved towards the eastern region and the problems of eastern India are not very different from the problems of Bangladesh the difference being that Bangladesh being a sovereign nation is able to you know devote more attention and resources and also because of its history, you know, when it was born, there was hardly any government there. So there are very large, well-established NGOs like Grameen and BRAC there, which are very effective, which is not so true of Eastern India. So I think it, it would be a kind of almost same, you know, somewhere between 2025 and 2030, we would have poverty in the range of single digit percentages, I hope, and with a slightly higher poverty line than today. But are you yeah. as confident as <laughs> Professor Yunus was. Are you as confident about the India story? Yeah, I think so. Uh, but in a very different way, you know. I mean, in India, we we work through several methods. We work through government. We work through state, central and state governments, through panchayats, through NGOs, uh, through movements. So it's the additive effect of all of these. You know, it's not any single uh, NGO's effort or a single magic bullet solution which I am in favor of. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.